We're in the Rio Grande Valley looking across the river at Mexico. This is the busiest place for illegal immigration in the United States. It's our first visit since the change in administration. And the first time we've been told Border Patrol is not allowed to assist us. But thanks to the help of local law enforcement officials and private citizens, a glimpse at what many believe is a crisis growing out of control. on U.S. soil for the first time. A group of mostly Central American migrant mothers and children smiling on the home stretch. <laughs> like the 6,000 others per day reported to be going around official entries at Texas's southernmost point, they believe the journey is a success. What, what made you come to the United States now? It, was there something you heard in your own country? that made you decide this was a good time to come? Mm -hmm. he, he, read, he saw in the news there was a new president and uh, he had more opportunity. Smugglers see more opportunity too as they navigate dangerous rip currents racing across the Rio Grande one after the other, hour after hour. Mexican authorities watch it happen from the water as U.S. border agents manage dozens, even hundreds at a time, while also trying to keep cameras away. Can you please not interfere in our enforcement? This is private property. The government does not own this property, but they're telling us we have to leave right now. During the commotion on shore, scouts give the all clear for another crossing. The distance only about the length of a football field. This is the Mexican side of the border. In the sand, the footprints of thousands of migrants who've waited to cross into the U.S. with the help of a smuggler. It happens all day, every day. Fearing for her own safety, this resident asked we hide her identity. In the last couple months, how many rafts have you seen cross in the time you've been out here? If I had to give you an estimate, I would say at least 60, 70 per day. Hundreds of people. Most come from Central America, traveling weeks to get here. Nearly all claim to be fleeing violence and poverty. What will you do now that you're in the United States? Along the way, many become victims of abuse and exploitation. So, Often at the hands of drug cartel members, they pay thousands of dollars to get them here. Especially we have women and little girls coming in in thousands. And we all know that women and little girls have a 60 to 80 percent chance of getting raped. Not all who make the trip survive. Sometimes see dead bodies floating and stuff because they try to make it across where they get snagged on the bottom or or whatever reason they, they don't make it. Still, many do, including the unaccompanied children crammed into this overflowing detention facility in Donna, Texas. Every facility we have along the southwest border is over capacity right now. Uh, just yesterday we had over 10,000 people in Border Patrol custody. That's much higher, especially under COVID uh, constraints, than uh, any facility should, should have. We saw makeshift facilities like this one under a bridge intended to go undetected by media and other observers. Migrants are then sent to area shelters and in a matter of hours, free to go. They're released so they can continue that, their legal proceedings here in the United States, somewhere where they're going. Only recently is the Border Patrol confirming the record numbers being released into the U.S. without court dates, as the system grows more overwhelmed by the day. In March alone, an estimated 171,000 plus entered the U.S. illegally, five times more than a year ago. By year's end, the number expected to reach more than one million. As soon as uh, they get up to this side, they go ahead and uh, flag down Border Patrol because they want to get caught, because they know they're going to get processed and, and then uh, shipped out to wherever they're going to get shipped out. They're not going to get deported back to their, their country.
Mm. Signs of the migrant surge, like these pants left behind, are obvious on the border. But experts say the problem is increasingly being felt across the nation in areas far from the Rio Grande Valley. In South Texas, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News.